Hello guys, welcome back to my channel for another video this week. If you saw my video last week or you didn't, you might have noticed either way that I took a little bit of a break from YouTube just because I was feeling uninspired. I wanted to be sensitive to the Black Lives Matter movement and it just absolutely did not feel right or important at all to post content on here. And I really shifted my focus to Instagram and ways to involve and educate myself offline. But now I'm back with some decor content because if you did go watch my last video, you might know that I am moving. And so with that, I will be restarting what was formerly my apartment redecoration series, but I'm gonna be pivoting it. I'm really excited about that. But before we do all of that, I've done a lot of Photoshop stuff and like decorating and how I use the things together. I don't think I've really though walked you guys through how I do certain things. There are definitely varying levels of, you know, difficulty and experience that you might want to have with Photoshop to do some of these things. And I by no means am like an expert at all. I'm sure that I am doing things in ways that could be done a lot easier, but this is just like the way that I know how to do it and it's fast for me now. But either way, I just thought I would show you some things in case this is something you wanna do. I'm specifically gonna be talking about using Photoshop in relation to decor and furniture items, but you could apply a lot of these same ideas to other things. I have actually gotten a few DMs from people asking where I learned Photoshop and the short answer of that is basically I'm taught myself over the years. I am really exposing myself here but I used to be really into uh, Neopets and I'm also like a horse girl and so there was this website called Horseland and I like made graphic design stuff for people on that website. All of that though leads me into the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. You guys know that I've worked with them before several times now, but Skillshare is actually the perfect sponsor for a video like this because it is an online learning community where millions of people go to take the next steps in their creative journeys. The platform has thousands of classes, perfect for creative and curious people, covering pretty much every creative topic out there, as well as some lifestyle stuff, freelance, all of that. Now, as I've continued to teach myself photo shop and also taught myself things like Final Cut. One place you might go to learn quick things is YouTube, but for me I actually really like a platform like Skillshare to learn those things because the videos are just better explained, they're produced nicer, and they're easier to follow in general. One of the best parts about Skillshare too is that it is a huge community of people like I said, so that means you do get to talk and interact with and get feedback from people in those communities. If that sounds like something you might want to try out, be sure to click the link in my description box because the first 1,000 people to click it will get a two-month free trial of Skillshare Premium so you can explore your creativity. Normally it runs less than $10 a month for a year subscription, so it is a really great opportunity to try it out. All right, let's get into the video. All right, it got very dark and it's gonna rain outside any minute now, so I had to turn on a light, but I don't think it looks that bad, but bear with me. Anyways, basically in this video, I'm gonna be going over four main topics and that should pretty much set you up to be able to organize your, your rooms in Photoshop and like mock them up. As I've done with other videos like this, I'm gonna be uh, doing a screen recording. So I just pulled up a photo of my apartment before I moved in. It's this wall right here. That's what I'm gonna be using to kind of show you this. You can also do this as you've seen in my past videos if you've seen them. I also just do things on a white background without using a photo of a real space. So the first thing I wanted to show you was how to remove backgrounds. Now there are a few different ways you can do this and it really depends on the type of photo that you have. So for example, if you have something on a white background, if you open up a photo on Photoshop that you have saved from the internet, it will usually start out with the background layer, which is the only layer on the photo at the time being locked. So I would unlock that before you do every, anything. If you have a high contrast image, basically it's going to be easier to remove things than it is if you have one that's low contrast contrast, which actually this might be a bad example because the rug is um, light around the edges, but say it was like a bright green or like a dark red or something, um, it would be very easy to just get rid of the background. And actually this worked well. The first thing I always try to do is use the magic eraser tool, which is right here. You can also use the background eraser tool um, for certain things, but the magic eraser tool just literally gets rid of things in one click, which is great. Another way that I also like to do uh, things like rugs, especially if the rug is already straight, is use the um, polygon lasso tool because it's just straight points. You click with every point that you want to kind of stick as you're outlining something. And then from there, you can either just copy this inner image and then paste it in a new space or take a part of it and remove the background like that. Now, say you have something like this couch photo right here. So what you can do is use that background eraser tool and it should do a pretty good job, but because 
this is a photo that has a shadow under it, it might leave this behind. As you can see, I just clicked the shadow part and it didn't do a very good job. You can change the tolerance and things like that, but for me, and this again might be like a weird convoluted way of doing things, but I'll just go in with the lasso tool and quickly remove this part. Some people too also might use the quick selection tools or the magic wand tool. There are, you know, different tools you can play around with, but again, I just like to do it with the polygon lasso tool because it's easier for me. <laughs> for photos like this, I just like to get rid of as much of the background as possible as I can first, and then from there I'll go in with a mix of the polygon lasso tool. Now for certain areas, specifically areas that might be very small or just oddly shaped or something like that, that is a time when I would go in with a eraser brush. You can easily just get rid of it like that. And it's definitely not going to be perfect, but I think it still looks pretty clean. Um, and it's definitely good enough for the purpose that we need it for. Next, I will show you how to Play with your wall colors. Um, this can also be applied to, I guess, like floors and stuff like that. I find this pretty easy to do with walls either way, just because like I was saying with the um, removing backgrounds part, walls are geometric and that makes it really easy to isolate them. So for this here, I'm using this photo of my apartment before I moved in and I'm adding a new layer first of all, because I want to make sure that the color I choose or the color that I'm applying or whatever I'm applying in my wallpaper also is going to be on a new layer. Basically, I zoom in a little bit and then all you really have to do is follow the lines that are already existing on the photo here and then you have the wall isolated. Making sure you're on your new layer, then you just add it here. Now, as you can see, you know, this corner isn't perfect, but it doesn't really matter to me for the, this purpose. And you can get a good general idea if that's all you need. But if you want um, it to feel a little bit more realistic, you can add back in the things like these outlets or these light switches. All you would do here is just go in and similar to how you cut things out in different photos, you just literally do the same thing. And then I go and turn the opacity back up either all the way or a little bit lower if you want to see some texture on the wall, something like that. And then pretty quickly you have your wall cut out or your wall color changed. And you can do this with any color if you want to match a specific color, whether it's a color that you found of a paint swatch or a color you see online that you just like and then later want to go find a paint color that matches it you can always just use the dropper tool. I'm also just gonna quickly show you an example with wallpaper. This might not be the best uh, photo to use just cause it's only a sliver of the wallpaper. So I just made that double the size by duplicating it and then putting them next to each other and then merging the layers. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is go to perspective warp, which I'll show you a little bit more of in a second. Follow the corners of the wall so that it matches the perspective that this photo is in. And that way it kind of looks a little bit more like it's on the wall than it might otherwise. So now we have my wallpapered wall. Okay, next we're gonna talk about perspective, which is, I don't know, I think pretty easy depending on what you're working with. Let's do furniture first. If you are finding a piece of furniture on a furniture store's website or something like that, a Wayfair, even Amazon, they should give you enough angles that you should be able to work with something. Like a lot of furniture places will do this kind of like tilted angle, which is nice, especially if you wanna put something in a wall that's not the wall that you're facing in the photo. So for example, based on this photo, if I wanted to put something on this side wall here instead of just the back wall, a photo like this where it's angled this way is super, super helpful. First, what I'm gonna do is copy this, this uh, photo and image onto this dock right here. And then the very first thing I'm gonna do based on just the orientation of the photo, I wanna work with the side that's already tilted in a little bit and have that work to my benefit. So I'm going to flip the layer, see how that is already a little bit more on the right track. Then the way that I do this is just to use the perspective warp tool in Photoshop, which you get to by edit, and then it's right there, perspective warp. Okay, so all you do is just drag this to the approximate size and edges of your layer that you're working with. If it's a little bit off or a little bit over, like it is right here, it's not perfect, it'll still work. You can play around with this. As you can see, when I pull this out here, it gets more to the angle that I want it. And then sometimes 
I'll have to go in a second time if it's not quite right and further adjust it. Now, I think a tip that's probably helpful when you're doing something like this is to follow the general lines of the room, which you can see based on, for example, in this photo, the wood is clearly going one direction and then also the baseboards are going in a specific direction. So you are gonna wanna follow those. See how that's almost aligned? I could probably play with this a little bit more for it to be a little bit more accurate, but I think that we're in a better place than we started for sure. If you wanna keep it a little bit easier and something that you can do if you just had it on a white background, for example, you could do something like a rug, which I always find to be very easy. Basically, I just paste it into my room or onto my blank white layer, doesn't matter what you're using, and use the perspective warp tool again, except this time, all you're gonna have to do is drag it to the exact size of your rug or just a little bit bigger again and really uh, go in there and play with the points on the floor. Again, you're gonna wanna follow these lines. So for example, like this is following this and it's relatively parallel. But as you can see, we took these two images to this and put them in this room here. And that is just a little bit on perspective. It is really thundering outside, so if you hear that, I'm sorry in advance. The last tool that you really need in order to be able to just put your little rooms together on Photoshop is layering, which is like very basic pretty much, but um, I'm just gonna show you an example because why not? So for example, if you had your coffee table that I cut out earlier, then you wanna go add it to your room here and all you do is paste it in just like normal and resize it accordingly. Now all the lighting in here does not match and whatever and to me that's fine. That's not really like what my priority was. You can definitely experiment with that and like fake your lighting and whatever on Photoshop, but that's not ever something I really consider because it's like I'm more so doing this kind of stuff to give myself a general idea on what looks good, what's not gonna look good, what's not gonna pair well together. This is another situation where you could, of course, play with the perspective warp tool. Like, obviously, this doesn't look so realistic when I place it in the middle of the rug here. I also have some other things here. So, like, for this pillow, for example, if I wanted to add that on my couch and see what that might look like. If you wanted to even layer up your pillows and see how your pillows are pairing, you can also do that. I'm really just eyeballing the sizes here. If you wanna get very exact, there's definitely a way that you can put everything to scale. When I'm doing these things, I will often reference the measurements of things. So like if the pillow is you know, 12 inches versus 24 in diameter, that is very different, obviously. So um, you just wanna have a general idea of how those things relate, but it doesn't have to be exact. The coffee table in this image already has stuff on it and I left that there on purpose because that was in the original photo, but if you want to start out with something that's more of a blank slate, for example here, I grabbed the blank version of this image and you could grab something like a vase, coffee table books, anything you want and layer it on top to see how your stuff is pairing. And there you go. If you're doing something more like a furniture board and you don't need it to be kind of mocked up so much, you can just place things more so like this, um, where they're kind of separate and not so literal in terms of building out a room. So I hope that was helpful. I know I kind of ran through everything and I probably didn't explain it completely as well as I could. I pretty much did this entire video off the cuff. I didn't really have a script or a plan beforehand, which was maybe not the greatest idea. As I mentioned in my last video, I will be donating the money from this sponsorship to a Black Lives Matter related cause. I will see you guys soon and have some moving and decor content for you. So see you then. Bye.